Yo guys, today we are gonna delve into the depths of Wanderer, an Animo DPS and a Catalyst Wielder. And once was the 6th member of 11 Fatui Harbingers. Today we are about to know his best artifacts, weapons, constellations, his playstyle and much more. Starting with the stamina section, his normal attack performs up to 3 attacks using Wind Blades, dealing any more damage. And his charge attack consumes a certain amount of stamina, gathers a build up of high wind pressure and deals AOE any more damage after short casting time. And his plunging attack, calling upon the power of Animo, the Wanderer plunges towards the ground from midair, damaging all opponents in his path, deals AOE any more damage upon landing. And his Yarmthal skill concentrates the power of the winds to break free from the shackles of the earth, dealing AOE any more damage before leaping into the air and entering the wind favored state. Wind favored state is the state where Wanderer cannot perform plunging attacks. When he uses normal and charge attacks, they will be converted into Kugo Fushodan and Kugo Tofukai. The damage they deal and their AoE will be increased. And the damage will be considered normal and charge attack damage. Kugo Tofukai will not consume stamina. The Wanderer will hover persistently during this time. When the state is active, the Wanderer's movement gain the following properties. It persistently consumes Kugo Ryoku points to maintain this hovering state. When sprinting, additional Kugorayaku points will be consumed for the Wanderer to sprint midair. Holding down sprint will cause persistent Sky Dweller point consumption to maintain speed. This effect will replace his default sprint. Jumping expense extra Kugorayaku points to increase hovering height. Holding jump will cause persistent Kugorayaku points consumption to keep increasing hovering height. Running out of Kugorayaku points will end the wind favored state. A second cast during the duration of in favor will also end it. And this elemental burst compresses the atmosphere into a singular vacuum that grinds all troubles away, dealing multiple instances of AOE and more damage. If Wanderer is in the wind favored state due to his elemental skill, wind favored state will end his casting. And this passive one, if his elemental skill comes into contact with Hydro, Pyro, Cryo or Electro, this instance of wind favored state will obtain buffs according to the contacted elements. If it is contacted with Hydro, Kugo Ryoku point cap increase by 20. And with Pyro, attack increases by 30%. And with Cryo, crit rate increases by 20%. And with Electro, when normal and charge attacks hit opponents, 0.8 energy will be restored. Energy can be restored in this manner every 0.2 seconds. You can have two different kinds of these buffs simultaneously. And his passive 2 when the Wanderer hits opponents with Kogo Fushudan or Kogo Tofukai in his wind favored state, he has a 16% chance to obtain the descent effect. The next time the Wanderer accelerates in mid air while in his instance of the wind favored state, the effect will be removed. The sprint instance will not consume any Kogo Ryaku points. And he will fire off 4 wind arrows that deal 35% of his attack as animal damage each. For each Kugo Fushudan or Kugo Tofukai that deals not produce these effects. The next attack of those kinds will have a 12% increased chance of producing it. The calculation of the effect production is done once every 0.1 second. And his passive 3 is his utility passive. Mora expended when ascending bows and catalyst is decreased by 50%. Moving on to his constellation section, his C1 attack speed during wind favored state increases by 10%. Gains of Rivari 4th Ascension passive will deal slightly more damage. Mainly used for squeezing more attacks. Good but not great. And the C2 enhances burst damage by up to 200% if cast near the end of Wanderer's win favored state. Gives Wanderer a reason to burst every rotation. And the C3 increases his burst talent level by 3. More damage weakest compared to previous constellations. And the C4 Increases elemental infusion cap on skill 2-3, but applies a random elemental infusion as well. This is an undeniable source of damage buff, but still nice. And the C file increases his elemental skill level by 3. The weakest constellation by far at only a 3% damage increase. And the C6 extends duration of wind favored state while increasing the damage of normal attacks by 40%. Naturally, the largest damage bonus. Moving on to his best artifact sets, his first town slot is Desert Pavilion Chronicle. The two piece set functions the same as Verdison when I set and will grant a 15% animo damage bonus, which is always a great choice for any animo character, but especially for those like Wanderer who is focused on dishing out heavy damage. 
The four P set focuses on charge attacks and cause a charge attack that successfully hits an enemy to then increase normal attack speed by 10%. The same effect will also raise the damage of normal charge and plunging attack damage by 40% and will be active for 15 seconds. The 4P set is a great choice for Vander alongside another 2P set such as Verdes and Vanderer or Gladiators Finale. But should only use the full 4P set if you plan to activate Vander's charge attack frequently. Otherwise, you will find that it does nothing for you and that the 2 piece version of this set should be paired with a different set instead. And to the next artifact, Verdes and Vanderer, the 2 piece version of this set grants an Animo damage increase of 15% and is interchangeable or stackable with the Desert Pavilion Chronicle set. The 4P set increases the damage of the Swirl Elemental Reaction by 60%. It also lowers all opponent's elemental resistance to whichever element is mixed in with Swirl by 40% for 10 seconds. And the next artifact is Shivanova's Reminiscence. If you are looking to raise Vanda's attack, may like the 2P version of this set which grants a simple but powerful increase of 18%. The 4-piece Shimeniwa's Reminiscence increased normal charge and plunging attack damage by 50% for 10 seconds. When the character that this set is equipped to have 15 or more energy and consumes that 15 energy to perform this action. Although the full 4-piece set of Shimeniwa's Reminiscence can be quite useful for players who are seeking a damage increase on Wander's basic attacks. It is generally a better choice to instead only equip the 2-piece set of Shimeniwa's Reminiscence alongside another 2-piece set. And the next is Echo Soften Offering. The 2-piece Echo Soften Offering set functions the same as the 2-piece Shimeniwa's Reminiscence set and also offers an attack increase of 18%. The 4-piece Echo Soften Offering artifact set grants normal attack that hit enemies a 36% chance of activating a valley right which will then increase normal attack damage by 70% of attack if it is activated. If a normal attack does not activate valley right then the chances of it being triggered upon the next normal attack will be raised by 20%. The valley right effect will come to an end 0.03 seconds after a normal attack has dealt damage. And the next is Gladiators Finale. Another option for increasing Vanderer's attack is a 2-piece Gladiators Finale set which grants an attack increase of 18%. While both Shimeneva's Reminiscence and Echoes of an Offering are solid options as full 4-piece sets for the Wanderer, the full 4-piece Gladiators Finale set only applies to characters who wield a Claymore, Polearm or Sword and should not be equipped on Wanderer since he is a Catalyst character. Instead, the Gladiators Finale set can be equipped alongside another 2-piece attack bonus set like Shimeneva's Reminiscence or Echoes of an Offering for a total attack increase of 36 or alongside a set like Desert Pavilion Tronical or Vedas and Venera to attain both an attack and animal damage increase. And his next artifact is Noblesse Oblige. The Noblesse Oblige artifact set is one of the Genshin's best and will work well for increasing Wanderer's Elemental Burst damage. The two-piece version of the set grants an Elemental Burst damage increase of 20%. The full four-piece set will raise all party members' attack by 20% for 12 seconds when an Elemental Burst is cast. This ability will not stack because Wanderer should be focused on dishing out damage. Players will likely only want to equip the 2-piece version of this artifact set on him. The 2-piece set increasing elemental burst will pair quite well with any of the other previously mentioned set. But especially with either the Desert Pavilion Chronicle set or the Verdes and Venera set for a powerful animal damage increase. And for his artifact stats, you can go for attack percentage on Sans and animal damage bonus on Goblet and crit on Circlet. And for his substats, you can go for attack percentage, energy recharge, Grid rate and crit damage. The amount of energy recharge he needs in general, Wanderer can ignore energy recharge since most of his damage comes from his normal and charge attacks. It's not the end of the world if he can't burst on occasion. For most builds, leaving him at 100 to 130 percentage ER is fine. Moving on to his weapon section, his best on slot is his signature weapon, Tulaytula's Remembrance. Finally, it's no surprise that Wanderer's signature weapon is the best in slot for him. As soon as you equip the weapon on a character, they get a constant crit damage and normal attack speed both for secondary stat and passive. Using an elemental skill also gives you a normal attack damage boost every second. As a cherry on top of the cake, you can get even higher normal attack damage boost when you hit enemies with set attacks. While you can use both normal and charge attacks in Wanderer's elemental skill, 
It's recommended to only use the former if you are using this weapon. And his next weapon is the Lost Prayer of the Sacred Winds. This weapon can also be acquired randomly when you're wishing on the standard or the weapon banner. But it also has a high drop rate at certain times on the weapon banner. But it also has a high drop rate at certain times on the weapon banner. It's considered one of the best weapons in the game because of the surprising 33.1% crit rate on the secondary stat. While his ascension stat is also a crit rate and these two things are almost enough to fulfill the crit rate requirement. Moreover, you constantly get an 8% elemental damage bonus when you are on the field with this weapon. And this stacks up to 4 times. And the next weapon is Witsit. The Witsit is one of the best all-rounder weapons in Genshin Impact because of the diversity of its passive and secondary stat. You can get up to 55.1% crit damage from this weapon, which makes the pressure of getting good artifact much lesser. Moreover, you can get an attack person boost, elemental damage boost or elemental mastery at random whenever the character takes the field. All three of these buffs are great because Spandrunner always deals elemental damage and he is great for triggering swell reaction. And the next weapon is Skyward Atlas. Getting into the whole territory, Skyward Atlas is one of the standard weapons in Genshin Impact. It can be acquired randomly when you are pulling on the weapon or the standard banner. This weapon only has an attack percent boost of 33.1% at the maximum level but it has a high base attack of 674. And the next weapon is Todoko Tails. Wanderer has a bunch of choices for a suitable 4 star weapon. But this is the rarest one because it could only be acquired during a limited time event. Similar to Eye of Perception, this weapon also gives you an attack percent bonus of 55.1 at the maximum level. But its passive is where the boot stuff is at. With this weapon, Wanderer's normal and charge attack buff each other. He can also use the two attacks when he floating with the elemental skill, making it easy to get this boost furthermore. If you have this weapon, you will most likely have to on Refinement 5 since it was given for free. And the next weapon is Blackcliff Agate. Blackcliff Agate is another great weapon for free to play gamers because it can be bought using Star Glitter in Paimon Shop. You can get Star Glitter when you summon a 4 star and 5 star weapon or a 4 star or 5 star character's copy. The weapon gives you a high 55.1 crit damage at the maximum level. Furthermore, your attack percent is increased up to 3 times whenever you defeat an enemy. Wanderer is best against your horde of small enemies. And this weapon buffs that aspect of him even more. And the next weapon is Mapa Mar. Mapa Mar is one of the best weapon choices for free to play or low spending players when it comes to Wanderer. It's a craftable weapon that can be acquired as far as you have one of the Northlander Catalyst Billets. These billets can be acquired by exploring Monster Leeway and Inazuma or from different weekly bosses fights. It gives you 1 ton elemental mastery and increase your elemental damage by 32% after triggering 2 elemental reactions at Refinement 5. This can be a great fit if you want to use Wanderer as a mediator between reactions from off-field characters like Shangling or Fischl. And the next weapon is Eye of Perception. Eye of Perception is a 4 star weapon that players can get from any banner randomly. Sometimes it's featured on the weapon banner with a higher drop rate. This weapon gives you an attack percent bonus of 55.1% at the maximum level as a secondary stat, which is one of the most useful stat for Wanderer. Secondly, the normal and charge attacks done by the character using this weapon have a chance of firing a bolt that can deal massive damage to 4 enemies at random. Since Wanderer scales on attack completely, this weapon suits him. Although you might struggle with this crit ratio if you don't have good artifacts. Moving on to his best team comps, his first team is the ultimate buffed Wanderer. This team consists of Wanderer, Faruzan, Bennett and Zombie. Wanderer is a character who loves being at the center of attention. And his kit allows the same pattern as he is one of the few characters who can stay on field forever. With all of that in mind, the best team for Wanderer is the one that buffs him directly. He performs best when he is in the center of attention that he desires to be. Faruzan, Bennett and Zhongli directly buff him. And they don't need a lot of field time allowing the Wanderer to stay active and destructive. Faruzan is the perfect animal support for him because you'll have to switch to her every few seconds if you want to use her passive to apply the animal resistant shred since it only lasts for 4 seconds. With the 6 second downtime on Wanderer's elemental skill, you can switch to all the characters and reapply the buffs to them. To have a good uptime on this team, you'll need to have a high energy recharge on both Faruzal and Bennett. Ideally, you'd want to have both their buffs back as soon as their cooldown ends. 
Having a Favonius weapon on either or both of these characters can also help. And his next team is a Vaporized Reaction Driver team, which consists of Wanderer, Ellen, Shangling, and Toma. Being a Catalyst user who can dish out a ton of animal damage, Wanderer is also perfect for being the driver for different reactions. The 4 piece Vertus and Venerer artifact set decreases the target's resistance to element you swirl, and you can easily swirl multiple elements with Wanderer. This is a great team for Vaporize that can also help Wanderer deal a lot of damage. Yelen is the only Hydro Act character in the team and she can increase the active character's damage by 3.5% every second during her elemental burst. This will increase Wanderer's Animo damage by up to 50%. While you can choose any rotation you want for this team, keep in mind that Yelen's elemental burst lasts the longest, followed by Shangling and then Toma. The pyro resonance from having two characters of this element also increases your character's attack by 25%. And his next team is Electrocharge team, which involves Wanderer, Yamiko, Shincho, and Beidou. Electrocharge is triggered when an enemy gets both Electro and Hydro element applied to them at the same time. Upon triggering this reaction, you can deal Electro damage to a few nearby enemies continuously. You'll see a lot of damage numbers whenever you trigger Electro Charge, and Wanderer's presence in this team adds to it. Furthermore, Beidou's 6 constellation decreases the Electro resistance of all nearby opponents during a burst as well. While this team can work perfectly with all the characters being at C0, it can make some quality of life differences with Beidou's 6th constellation. And the next team is Freeze team, which involves Wanderer, Samaromiya Kokumi, Rosaria, and Diana. Freeze has been one of the most popular reactions in the game because it can essentially immobilize the enemy forever upon correct execution. This is great if you are about to fight annoying enemies like Rift Crowns or Spectres that move a lot and are hard to control with animo skills. With this team, you will never lose a character because both Kokomi and Diana can heal their party and the latter can also provide a strong barrier every time her elemental skill is used. You will be getting healed and protected constantly with this team but you have to make sure that you don't end up freezing yourselves. Moving on to his DPS showcase, my Wanderer is at level 90, his all talents are at level 9, and his attack is above 1900, and to his crits, his crit damage is at 223.3% and his crit rate is at 54.9%. I'm showcasing one of my favorite team which involves Wanderer, Yamiko, Shincho and Beidou. By the way, share your thoughts about this video on Wanderer. Likes and subs are really appreciated. See you with another video. Emerge! Right here! Uh, uh, a sight to behold! 